Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, we will start with a new lecture today and it is about microstructure evolution. In hot deformation process, the main purpose of uh, our uh, doing this particular process is to uh, change the microstructure or bring new microstructural features okay, and that is done through hot deformation process. Okay, so, uh, we want to understand that what microstructure evolution can take place. And basically to understand the different type of microstructural features because these features will keep coming in the remaining lectures. Okay, so, I will introduce those features to you so that when it when we are referring to those features or those techniques to understand the features, okay, you will be able to relate with, uh, um, with this particular lecture. Okay. So, the microstructure features which are uh, important during hot deformation process okay, which we try to do or which we try to change with through hot deformation process is basically grain size, May main purpose is to refine the grain size. Okay, so, because grain size refinement uh, as you know the hall pitch relationship, so with, with re refinement in grain size you get more strength. Uh, another is grain shape. Okay, so, for with different hot deformation process you do get different kind of shapes. Okay. It can be equixed shape means in all the axis or in all the direction the size of the grain is same okay. or it can be as we can say, say that it, it can have a elongated grains okay, like this. Then grain boundary character distribution. Okay, so, we, you already know that there is some features called grain boundary in the microstructure. In that also there are uh, differences, okay. some are low angle grain boundary, some are high angle grain boundary. So, what is the grain boundary character distribution and of course, crystallographic texture. So, the hot deformation process, process which bring changes in these features okay. as we I told you about grain size, grain shape, grain boundary character distribution and crystallographic texture. Okay, so, the processes which bring this changes in this particular features and which are uh, used in hot deformation processes or which are uh, acting during the hot deformation processes okay, are dynamic recovery, dynamic recrystallization. In dynamic recrystallization also there are two, three different distinct processes have been identified by researchers. These are discontinuous dynamic recrystallization which is also called as classical dynamic recrystallization where you have nucleation and growth and these we will uh, of course, uh, study or uh, discuss in detail in the coming lectures. Then you have a continuous dynamic recrystallization, okay. recently people have started talking about this a lot. In fact, now it is, it happens uh, that people feel that continuous dynamic recrystallization is the most common and the discontinuous is uh, taking place only in few cases. And then geometrical dynamic recrystallization and uh, another class of recrystallization or dynamic recrystallization which is called meta dynamic recrystallization. So, we will see these recrystallization processes also in detail. Okay. Right now, we would like to see what kind of microstructural changes takes place during the deformation process. If you see the changes which takes place, uh, a, a very simple uh, way of looking at it is in this particular slide. Okay. Of course, this uh, kind of deformation uh, we are doing at lower temperature. So, you can see that it is a room temperature deformation and uh, the material which is used is 304 stainless steel polycrystalline. Okay. 
and uh, they have the the researcher have done a very elaborate work on this okay that they have taken the sample from different stages during the deformation process okay and uh, in these are tem micrographs okay and they are showing the how the dislocations are arranged okay so please remember that this is not a high temperature deformation this is a room temperature deformation that means low temperature deformation so lot of the processes which happens at high temperature is not going to take place here okay but deformation will always be either through dislocation or twinning uh, usually most uh, usual process is through dislocation movement or dislocation generation and dislocation movement so this dislocation actually are rearranging okay in kind of they are tangling with each other they are uh, interacting with each other and they are forming this kind of small cells okay and a very thick you can see very thick um, boundary is there of all these dislocations okay so this is what you will see usually in case of a low temperature deformation okay that dislocation generation is taking place and then they are tangling and making this kind of cell okay and these are cell walls okay now this is a more elaborate uh, kind of uh, uh, picture okay uh, showing that what kind of microstructure evolution takes place as a function of a strain okay these are all schematic okay uh, with the strain and temperature okay so uh, the upper ones are shown for cold work material okay and you can see that the strain is increasing from left to right okay cold work microstructure are at the top and hot work microstructure are at the bottom okay and uh, i would say that uh, a demarcation between cold work and hot work will be let's say uh, i would say we will take 0.4 of melting point of that per material okay as the uh, demarcation between hot work and cold work so below this we will say cold work above this we will say hot work there is another segregation here which is also called warm working okay so another uh, addition is there now so you have hot working warm working and cold working okay so in cold work material you can see that the dislocations are getting entangled with each other okay and as you increase the strain okay so the this cells which are formed initially are becoming smaller okay and the width of the cell wall is increasing okay at even higher strain the cell wall uh, are becoming even more thicker and the cell size is becoming smaller and smaller so you will have very large uh, uh, dislocation density inside the material okay now if you compare this with the hot work material okay here also you can see that of course dislocation will be there as you are increasing the strain okay and now we are calling them as sub boundaries okay so this thick line are actually high angle grain boundaries and the smaller thinner lines or this kind of dashed lines are the sub grain boundaries okay so sub boundaries or sub grain boundaries okay so you can see that they are becoming thicker and thicker okay and again the grain is getting subdivided into sub grains okay and these are all now sub grain boundaries or low angle grain boundaries okay and with increase in strain okay the sub grain are still persisting okay you can see that the size is not changing much okay and in also the thickness of the Uh, walls are not changing much okay but uh, there will be some refinement in some localized region okay because of the strain and th these two micro structures are in between the two that means the cold work and hot work so you can see that how the temperature is playing role in the last four micrographs if you see okay in this direction my temperature is increasing okay and you can see the effect of the temperature as well as of the strain 
Now, what do we mean by grain and grain boundary? Uh, I just want to kind of uh, uh, do a recap for you. If you must have done this in your material science course, or if you are from metallurgy in different structural metallurgy course, for example. Okay, but just to do do a recap here, uh, you can see a microstructure is shown here with some dark boundaries. Okay. So, these dark boundaries are basically the high angle grain boundaries. Okay. So, what is a grain? Okay. The grain is something is which is surrounded by only the high angle grain boundaries. Okay. So, I would say that all these are my high angle grain boundary and if a portion of the microstructure is surrounded by a high angle grain boundary, I would call it as grain. And what happens in the grain? Okay, why we separate these? Uh, suppose it is aluminium or uh, ferrite, alpha ferrite in a steel. Okay, they they have same crystal structure. So aluminium is FCC. Okay, ferrite is BCC. Okay, so within a grain, it will have the same crystal structure. Okay, and in the throughout the microstructure, they will have the same crystal structure. So for example, if you take this as aluminium, it will be only face centered cubic. Then what is the difference between the grain or what is the identity of a grain? So, identity of a grain is that if you check the unit cell at different location in this particular grain, you can see that the unit cell is oriented in, in a same way. Okay. As soon as I cross the grain boundary, you can see that now the unit cell is in a different orientation, okay. but within that particular grain. Okay, again, this is a grain with high angle grain boundary. Again, the unit cell orientation is same. Again, if I cross the grain boundary, you can see that the orientation of the unit cell has again changed. Okay, but within the grain, it is still same. So the grain means that if you want to check the uh, orientation of the unit cell within that, okay, it will be same within the grain. As soon as you cross the grain boundary, it will has to change. And the grain boundary is the is a defect which kind of accommodate this change in the orientation between the unit cell at the grain boundary. Okay. What you see in an optical microscope is the, what we call as high angle grain boundary. We will see what do we mean by angle grain boundary. Okay. And low angle grain boundaries or what we saw in the previous uh, um, slide schematically they showed sub grain boundaries. This low angle grain boundaries will will not be visible in an optical microscope, okay. but for that you can do a TEM transmission electron microscopy or a, a newer technique which is called electron backscatter diffraction or EBSD also. So, you can use these techniques to also characterize the sub grain boundary or low angle grain boundary, okay. but optical microscopy will show you mostly the high angle grain boundary and that means only the grain information about the grain not the sub grain. Okay. Now, as I was telling about you electron uh, backscatter diffraction, okay. uh, a commercial name for this that is for, for a certain company is also called orientation imaging microscopy. So, in some papers you will see that the name orientation imaging microscopy is used OIM. Okay, but uh, please remember that it is a uh, uh, name of a or um, product of a certain company. Okay, whereas EBSD is a generic name. Okay, and what it gives you one of the output which it gives. Okay, is a kind of this nice color map. Okay, why I am showing is because this again will come at different places during our uh, discussion of uh, microstructure in uh, in the coming lectures. Okay, so you will see this kind of uh, microstructures a lot. Okay, so for example, in this particular microstructure, I see a very nice colored uh, uh, map. Okay, and each color actually is representing some information which for which the key is given here okay this is a this is what you call as inverse pole figure okay and this is also that is why it is called inverse pole figure map okay 
and what this each color represent is the orientation of the grain ok. As I just told you earlier also that a grain means a unit cell is oriented in a different way. So, you can see that all these different colors is actually representing the orientation of that particular grain and for that the key is here ok. So, if a grain is colored as red ok then it, it is 0 0 1 axis is coming out of the surface ok. So, for example, let us say uh, take a red color grain from here let us say this one ok. Now, if this is a red colored grain ok and if I am seeing from the top my unit cell will be like this ok because and the 0 0 1 axis is coming out of the surface ok. So, 0 0 1 axis is coming out from the surface ok. So, I would say this will be 1 0 0 and this will be 0 1 0 ok. If a grain is colored as green ok, let us say this one here ok, then it is a 1 1 0 or 0 1 1 oriented grain that means the 0 1 1 axis is coming out of the surface ok. So, if I want to draw that maybe if I am drawing it correctly here ok something like this ok or maybe you would not see the edges also here ok. Let me correct it here it will be like this ok. So, 1 0 0 is coming out ok and this plane is also what you are seeing will be 1 1 0 plane ok. And if it is 1 1 1 then it will be blue colored and the 1 1 1 axis will come out ok. So, this kind of map actually shows you this kind of information about orientation and then you can also do other analysis like what will be the texture and all those things ok. But I just wanted to show you that this kind of uh, information will keep coming during our discussion of hot deformation ok. Another uh, as I told you that one is grain, grain boundary ok. Then there is another uh, uh, detail to the grain is called subgrains ok. So, when I would call something as subgrain ok, as you can see sub means it must be something which is in hierarchy lower than the grain ok. So, a grain I would say is the portion of the microstructure which is surrounded by the high angle grain boundaries. Okay, and within those high angle grain boundaries okay, as it is shown in this micrograph very nicely okay, you can see that there are some black lines okay, and these black lines are high angle grain boundary okay, and within that there are large number of this white color boundaries okay, and these are all low angle grain boundaries. Okay. Low angle means you and the portion which is surrounded by this low angle grain boundaries ok, these are called subgrains. So, the a grain is sub divided into subgrains due to deformation process ok. Another uh, you uh, as I told you we keep using these kind of maps you can see a microstructure here ok. So, this is be before deformation or maybe a small amount of deformation and then you have more deformation here. So, the grains are now subdivided and you can see a very large number of these white portions within the grain which is subdividing the grain ok. So, they are uh, a bigger or a, a bigger grain is subdivided into a smaller grain using this subgrain boundaries or which is also called as low angle grain boundaries. So, this kind of division will be there and subgrains will form within the grain ok and subgrain boundaries and if the boundaries which are surrounding this subgrain will be called as subgrain boundaries. And these subgrain boundaries are usually uh, basically are low angle grain boundaries ok. So, this kind of microstructure you will see a very nice microstructure is shown here also. So, as I told you that uh, there are two types of grain boundaries are there ok, a low angle grain boundary and a high angle grain boundary. So, the boundaries are uh, typically they are defined as if it the uh, angle between the two grains is more than 15 degree or the misorientation between the two grains is more than 15 degree then it will be called as high angle grain boundary. And uh, if the 
misorientation between two grain is lower than 15 degree then it will be called as low angle grain boundary. And why we separate uh, the grain boundaries on some number like this is if I plot the grain boundary energy ok grain boundary energy as a function of theta that is the misorientation then it will have some curve like this ok. So, initially it will be a linear change. So, as I am increasing the angle theta the energy will increase linearly ok and after some time it will start getting saturated ok. So, this saturation point ok this is typically between this range 15 degree to 20 degree after that it becomes saturate that means the grain boundary energy become independent of the misorientation ok. So, this we kind of segregate as low angle and high angle grain boundary ok and when you do hot deformation ok this kind of changes keep taking place. For example, a uh, 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 graph is shown here and on the x axis it is, is saying number of forging passes. So, you can for our purpose you can just say take it as a strain. So, in x axis strain is increasing and this is the fraction ok of low angle grain boundary and high angle grain boundary ok. So, you can see as a strain is increasing initially the low angle grain boundary fraction is increasing. So, it is started from in the initial microstructure it was somewhere around 0.35 and it went up to around 0.85 ok after initial strain ok. And uh, of course, if LAGB or low angle grain boundary fraction is increasing then high angle grain boundary fraction has to come down ok. And as you increase more strain now you can see that the low angle grain boundary percentage is coming down now it has it is 0 0.6 after another amount of strain then it is going even below then the initial microstructure somewhere around 0 0.15. So, the idea is that grain size changes grain boundary character changes during the deformation process ok bigger grain subdivides into uh, smaller grains ok. So, a lot of changes takes place during the hot deformation process and it makes a microstructural characterization as a very interesting process to understand that how microstructure is evolving through uh, during this hot deformation process. Another very important uh, microstructural change which will take place during the deformation uh, is what we call as crystallographic texture ok. So, just to give you a quick summary of the crystallographic texture here we will discuss texture in more detail in the coming lectures also ok. As I told you that each grain identity is that what is the orientation of the unit cell ok. Now, let us suppose you have a condition ok where let us say you have 100 grains here ok and in each grain the orientation is randomly uh, uh, different ok. There is there is there is no uh, a particular type of orientation is there all the grains or all the units are uh, cells are randomly oriented ok. Then what we uh, can show this kind of orientation information is through uh, one characterization technique for example, is like pole figure ok. I can use a pole figure to uh, depict the information about the orientation in the grain. So, when all the unit cell are randomly oriented in each grain ok, then you will have a information where all this each individual point gives you the orientation of one grain ok. So, they are all randomly oriented. So, you will see point all over the place in the in this orientation space ok. But let us suppose you have a condition now that out of 100 grain let us say 30 grains are oriented in a particular fashion ok. Then you will see that th these points are kind of now crowding at one place ok and now I will start calling that ok maybe the material has texture ok. And of course, with more grains oriented in a similar fashion then you will have more intensity of the points clubbing together and I would say that it is a strongly texture or weak texture and so on or random texture ok. 
So, the, the grains how they are oriented if more number of grains are oriented in a preferred way okay, I would call it as crystallographic texture and how we can depict this crystallographic texture is through pole figure, inverse pole figure, another term called orientation distribution function or in terms of HKL UVW. Okay. So, this we will again discuss in more detail in the remaining lectures. Okay. So, the idea to bring here is that when you do hot deformation process, lot of microstructural changes takes place and microstructure evolution takes place during the deformation. And uh, understanding this microstructure evolution actually makes this particular uh, process very interesting okay, that you do deformation and do this microstructural uh, studies. Okay. And because these microstructural changes then bring the changes in the property that what will be the grain size what is grain boundary character distribution, then uh, what is the texture, okay. texture is very important in lot of processes for example, sheet metal forming or electrical steels. Okay. So, all these things uh, you have to control through hot deformation process. Okay. So, with that uh, I will close this particular lecture, thank you.